Hello world. Welcome to M-Type Modern. Three, two, one. Hello, this is George Edmondson with MotionVFX.com. Today we are going to be going over M-Type Modern. M-Type Modern can be located in your titles. Now, on each of these, you can skim over to get a real-time preview. So as you can see here, this is text preview, and then you have your different lowercase, and you can see how these are animated in, as well as your uppercase. Then we have digits, we have symbols, we have diacritics, and then we have a few custom options for custom glyph and custom shape. So the way this typically works is you're going to go ahead and drop in your text preview. So I'm just going to click this and press E that will just drop it to the end of my timeline, which of course is the beginning of our timeline. And then I'm going to keep my playhead at the beginning. Over in my inspector, of course I can turn on and off animations in and out. So I'm just going to actually leave those off for now. Then you can see we have lock Y position. So on our on-screen control, you can see that we can move on Y, but as I move up and down on X, nothing is happening because we have that locked so that you can center all of your text as you wish. If you want to turn that off, simply uncheck this and then you can move your word around freely. And then beneath we have some very basic parameters and then we have our text and the purpose of this text preview is so that you can type out a word and then you will apply the different letters with their animations on top and then you can disable it and that way you have your word and it's all spaced properly so for the sake of this tutorial why don't we just change our text here to motion one that way we can get some digits and stuff in there as well so now we can come over to our titles and let's go ahead and find our M and I like to keep this really simple. So I'm going to highlight that and then I'm going to tap Q and it's just going to drop that letter over and you can move really, really quickly. So you know that we're doing motion. So now let's go find our O, we'll tap Q. Let's go find our T, tap Q, I, tap Q to drop that in, O, N, and then we will find our digit and let's just do one. That way you can see we have motion one. I do want to quickly mention in order for your playhead to not move whenever you are doing those edit actions, you're gonna want to make sure that in your settings under editing, you have the position playhead after edit operation unchecked. Now, as I come down in my timeline of course they're all animating and they're going to all be together so we can just move up our line so i'm just going to highlight my m and then i'm just going to drag this over so that i can match that up and we do the same throughout each letter so now that you can see we have motion one is all there and you can see how those are animating in all together beautifully. So I can simply go down to my text preview, tap V to disable, and now we have a beautifully animated word with the digit motion one. So really, really simple to use. Let me just go ahead and bring my M so you can see. Again, we have an on-screen control and that Y position is going to be locked. If we want to unlock that, you just unlock it here in your inspector and then you can move it around freely. And of course, this is going to also adjust your scale and rotation as well as that position. Over in our inspector, again, really simple layout here. We can change the content color if we would like by dropping that down and then just use our color board or whatever to make different colors for our letters. And we can add drop shadow there as well if we would like. And then there are going to be a few of these that may have a secondary color during the animation. So as you can see on number one, let me come back in my timeline and you can see that we have this circle here doing our animation 
leading that in. And so if we wanted to change that extra color, we can do so here. Something like that. And then you can see that extra color is only going to be visible on those that have the extra color for animation. Now, as we said earlier, we of course also have all of these different symbols. And so if you wanted to drop these in, maybe we wanted some parentheses, something like that on each side, you can do so here. And we just drag those over. And again, they are locked on Y. And so everything is just gonna be really, really simple and clean. And they're going to animate in beautifully together. And then of course we also have the diacritics. So if you needed to use those, you can of course drop those in and they are usually going to be positioned pretty much where they need to be just in case. And then over in our inspector, we have again, lock our Y position and we can lock that for an uppercase or a lowercase word. So again, Motion VFX made it super simple so that things are always going to already be kind of where they need to be so that you can get moving quickly. So let's talk lastly about our customs. We have custom glyph and custom shape. So let me drop this in. I'm going to highlight it and tap E to add that to the end of my timeline. So this is based on the Poppins font and there are thousands of characters within Poppins. We were only able to animate the most commonly used characters. And so this custom is a great way to be able to use any additional characters that are found within that font. For instance, if we were using this letter here that is commonly found in the German word Strasse, and my German is not great, but that means street in German, this is going to be what you will find there. And so with that said, we can type this into our text box, and then we are going to want to use our on-screen controls here to define the path that this is going to follow to animate in. So as you can see here, I'm just very slowly and very carefully using my on-screen controls here to move this path so that we can create this animation. With that said, there are two masks that come. You can see one blue and one sort of a magenta color. I don't believe I need this mask here, so I'm just going to kind of put it out of my way for this character. And we are going to just use these on-screen controls again to sort of create this character. So over in my inspector, you can see how many points we have. Now currently we have seven and you can tell that that is not quite enough to finish off this character. So I'm just going to add a few more points. Let me go to maybe nine and let's see if that will do the trick. Now we've given a little bit more of the length there and then we can continue to just work with our on-screen controls coming around to fill this title in. And there we go. So as you can see, we were able to achieve this with nine of those points. And the great thing about these masks, they do not have to be totally perfect as long as they are covering and it is following the path that you set. And so with that said, over in our inspector, we can now change our animation type if we wanna do mask or rotation. I'm just gonna leave this as mask. I think that looks the best. Then you can see we have mask preview. So if we toggle that off, you can see now that our preview is off. And then you can see that we have now animated our letter. So really nice. So if you wanted to use this in context of the word, you can now just type out the word. Let me turn off my animations in and out really quickly. And again, I'm going to use my text preview here. Let's bring that in. I can bring this beneath my custom glyph since I already have that set up. I will turn off animations in and out. And then we can bring my custom glyph and we can just go ahead and place that where it goes and follow that same process that I showed earlier by just dropping these in on top and filling out our word. 
And there you go. Now you have those animating in beautifully together. So you are able to use any of those that would be found inside of the Poppins font. And the last thing I can show you very quickly is going to be our custom shape. And this is going to work in the same way that you would expect any of these to work. You have multiple on-screen controls here. And over in our inspector, we can change that shape type from linear or B spline. And you have up to eight points for that shape. So if you're creating some sort of a shape in which you need less than that, of course, you can change that here. And then we are able to just kind of create whatever that shape is that we're needing with our on screen controls. So let's say it's something like this. If you've got maybe some form of a logo or you want to use this to create multiple shapes to create a logo, something like that, you can do so in that way. And then you can see that that is just a nice animation position. And then it's just going to pop right back up. If you want to change this animation, you can do so here in your inspector. You can do position top. You could do opacity. So you can see that's just a nice fade in. You could do position bottom or you can do rotation as well. So that's just going to kind of rotate in there. And that's about it. Thank you so much for checking out this quick tutorial on M type modern, which is now available on motionvfx.com. Be sure to subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.